Hello and welcome to the TV enthusiast discussion of Hannibal season three. This is uh, Dinner with Hannibal is what we call this segment. Today we're, we are going to be talking about episode seven of season three, Digestivo. Uh, joining me today to discuss this episode is our news director on our site, Will Rorick. Hello. And I am your host for the evening, Tyson Gifford. I am the editor-in-chief of our site, which is tventhusiast.com. Uh, first thing we always do when we start these videos or our podcast or anything, or not our podcast, uh, with just these videos, the Hannibal videos, we talk about what we had for dinner because this is Dinner with Hannibal. And so um, today, you know, I had a very non-Hannibal dinner. I had a... a uh, yakisoba, which is uh, vegetables and noodles. It's a Japanese dish. Um, so yeah, very vegetarian. No, no meat. No meat in there at all uh, for today. Kind of a meatless Monday thing, even though it wasn't intended to be that. Ooh, meatless Monday. Speaking, of, I had uh, Hannibal's <laughs> worst <laughs> nightmare. Meatless. I Monday. had yeah, meatless Monday. Right. <laughs> I had uh, speaking of meatless Monday. I had. Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because I sure did not feel like cooking anything. <laughs> I was like lazy. I was like, oh, I have spaghetti. I'm like, oh, that's going to take effort. <sighs> we can't keep peanut butter in the house or I'll just go at it with a spoon. Oh, really? Yeah, so um, let's talk about the episode, Digestivo. Uh, this in many ways is almost like the series finale. I mean, there's more to come, but it feels like the series finale. This is the end of, uh, um, the Hannibal arc that's yeah. been going on for this whole time. Not only that, but I mean, this is like the naming convention of the show has always been, um, food titles. And the first season it was all French. The second was Japanese. And this season it's all been Italian. This and is this is the last one that's that's following that convention. This is interesting because this is the first time a season of Hannibal hasn't followed a single storyline throughout the season. Mm -hmm. This is split up into uh, two mini seasons, if you want to call them that, with two different plot lines. Um, that seems to be becoming a big trend in television, too, now. I know Once Upon a Time has started doing that. Where Walking Dead does that too. Walking Dead does that. I mean, they're starting. They're starting to do that more and more now, and it seems like Hannibal has followed that path. Although Hannibal isn't going to get to continue following that path because, <laughs> sadly. But it's interesting. Uh, but even with such, even with these half season stories, I feel like even though the plots are shorter and contained in smaller number of episodes i thought that this even this short season stood alongside the rest of the series you know there wasn't a dip in quality all Which killer was, no filler yeah all killer no filler and uh this finale was just as exciting just as gripping as any other finale in the series um I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd say it was as exciting as last season's finale. Well, no, it wasn't. I wasn't. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, it seems like they haven't. They haven't it's on finale. par with season one finale, I'd say, definitely. Yeah, on par with season. No, nothing's going to be last season's finale. I'm sorry. Hanna <laughs> Hannibal dropping the mic is going to be the best moment of the series. Unless... Something in the in the let in the Red Dragon art really amazes. I heard like there is a scene in the Red Dragon art that is so vicious, so gory that it literally made the crew members gasp when they saw it. <laughs> Brian, Brian Fuller mentioned this. He said it it made the crew members gasp when they filmed it. And I'm like, this is, you know, a crew that's been working on this show. <laughs> yeah, this is a crew that's been working on this show. That's but like saying a lot, you know, so. He's saying it's something that happened in the movie, but the way they do, the way they do it, it's much more gory 
and visceral in this in the show than it was portrayed in the film. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to seeing whatever the heck that is and being <laughs> shocked and amazed. I mean that so that could possibly be the end of Hannibal season two. But we'll see, but that is very hard to top. <laughs> Let's talk about um, what this means and what we're talking about here for anybody that's kind of uninformed. Um, the entire series of Hannibal is basically based on a very short part of the book Red Dragon, um, which, you know, all of this stuff started on. And there, there are a series of books, and you know, with Hannibal Lecter and um, it's Red Dragon, then Silence of the Lambs. Um, and then Hannibal and then Hannibal Rising, I believe. I'm not sure if there's more books. Those are the, all the movies based on the books, basically, that yeah. are that have come out. Um, Hannibal, Le Hannibal Rising seems to have been the last film, and then it seemed like the character had been retired, at least in the in the realm of film. Uh, mm -hmm. He had been retired. Uh, there actually being a Hannibal TV show right now is actually kind of surprising given that the lack of interest in the character after that movie came out. Um, well, not too surprising to consider the unfortunate lack of interest in the series. That's uh, true. Is yeah. what killed it. <laughs> um, but Unfortunate, yeah, unfortunately, this show couldn't revive that interest. Um, it should have. It should have. <laughs> I, I think it revived that interest in everybody that watched it. Yes, that was. <laughs> the problem is not enough people watched it. Um, so, but basically, okay, it turns everything out that's happened in the first two and a half seasons here of Hannibal is is very small part of the actual first book in the series. Um, in the books, I think like Will like basically s figures out Hannibal like right away, and that it just happens very quickly. Um, right. he, he figures him out that, and that ends it. And then they move on to this other story where Will is visiting Hannibal in prison, basically um, for mentorship advice on, on how to take down um, this new serial killer called the Great Red Dragon. Um, or they're, they're, they call him the Tooth Fairy at yeah, first. He, he fairy. calls himself the Red Dragon. Um, and that is where we are now that that this is the the, the spot that we're entering now so well, but there is a time jump for three years between the last episode that this episode that aired and the next episode that's going to air this saturday there is a time jump of three years so this isn't like immediately proceeding from what just happened and so yeah we're, we're entering red dragon territory now so now we're going to be um, it's still all content from the first book, amazingly. Um, that being said, uh, they've taken elements of basically every single book in the series outside of Silence of the Lambs. That's the only book they haven't touched right. on, basically. But Sadly. there are elements from, from Hannibal, elements from um, uh, 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 to, even Hannibal Rising has been in there uh, with uh, Chio. In fact, um, uh, in fact, the entire yeah, there have been elements of Hannibal Rising because uh, this season went went into some of Hannibal Lecter's background, which Hannibal Rising was a prequel story about Hannibal Lecter, his origins, and how he came to be the man that he came to be. That was yeah, the, the that. sister, and yeah, yeah, all that. That's so we got Hannibal bits Rising. of that. You know, he included bits of that bits of that into uh, the season which was really cool but the entirety of the the first half of the season was very much based off of the novel Hannibal which actually proceeds from Silence of the Lambs chronologically so he kind of messed with the timeline a little bit to get because he Brian Fuller set Hannibal before Red Dragon in his series, which was I thought was interesting, but it works. It works really well. Um, yeah, he, he hasn't touched on Silence of the Lambs. The plan was moving forward that we would get to Silence of the Lambs after the Red Dragon arc, maybe 
not immediately after, but it would be sometime after that. And there was definitely the plan to adapt Silence of the Lambs the same way he is a, we're adapting Red Dragon now. But um, they yeah. wouldn't be able to do it as directly as Silence of the Lambs. They wouldn't be able to use Clarice. They'd have to use Charlize or some yeah, other yeah. Okay, uh, because... facsimile of, of the character because... There's some, Those rights are separate. Yeah, there's some stupid rights and tri- uh, rights surrounding that character, which I don't even understand uh, what the deal there is. Um, Just complicated rights issues. It happens yeah. all the time. Apparently, Lifetime acquired the rights to make a Flurry Starling TV series. <laughs> and if they if they do this, if they if Lifetime gets a Clarice Starling series, some shitty series off the ground, and Hannibal's no more, oh god, what kind of an injustice? I know is what, that going to be. That would we, we would and that would get five seasons and a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this cruel world. Yeah, it would be so sad if that if that happens, but. Um, Let's talk about this episode itself, which is kind of a, a mid-season finale or, or the Hannibal arc finale, um, yeah. Digestivo. Uh, this episode kind of focused on the return of Will and Hannibal to um, uh, 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 the United States, um, to the Verger Farm. Uh, what's it called again? It's... I think it's called Muskrat Farm. That's it, Muskrat Farm. Okay, I was uh, hoping I didn't like mishear it and just assume that that's what it was, because because <laughs> Mason Berger, you know, it's not not doesn't really speak with it both with very much vocal clarity. Um, but we did get we did hear it from Jack as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's Muskrat Farms. Um, so yeah, Hannibal and. Uh, Will are delivered to Mason. We do get to see how they were captured, what happened essentially at the end of the last episode. And what happened to Jack. And what happened to Jack. Jack's fate was decided. They were going to kill Jack and blame it on Hannibal. But then Chio saved Jack. And uh, <laughs> I like the, the moment they had with it. And it was cool kind of replay on their scene in the elevator where he's like, she walked in and he said, wrong floor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, cool. you know, and then, uh, uh, like he was just, you know, quick to give up all the information he had there. Like he just didn't care. Yeah. He's like, he's like I'm not stupid. He's like, my only goal is to get out of here alive. And I have things to worry about in order to achieve that. And so I have no reason, uh, Resist no you. Yeah, go ahead. Go to Muskrat Bar. <laughs> yeah. I have no reason to get in the way of what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> well, basically, Jack was hoping that she wasn't just going to turn around and kill him anyway. Because it yeah. seemed, like, seemed like she was going to. Because it was like this kind of uneasy thing. where <laughs> it's It was kind of comical in a way because Jack was tied up. He had Hannibal there killing Will. It's just so Hannibal would have turned on Jack and done Jack in after he was done with Will. Hannibal gets captured in the process, and then the people who captured Hannibal were going to turn around and kill Jack. And then Chio kills those people and comes in, and you don't know if she's just going to kill Jack. So it's like Jack is constantly in danger, then <laughs> saved. But still in danger by the people who saved him, and it it seemed almost comical in that way. Yeah. <laughs> and the joke wasn't lost on Jack. That's why he was just like, "Yeah, they're at the muskrat. Just pull this people <laughs> out of my arm, please, and I'll just go on my separate way. I'm done." <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, really. <laughs> so then we we travel to Muskrat Farm, and that is where. We learn that uh, Mason Verger has actually saved um, his sister's um, eggs and used them with a surrogate. Yeah, a surrogate. It's somewhere on the farm. 
Uh, so it's on the farm, it's going to bear a verger baby, a pure verger baby from his sperm and her eggs, a creepy incest baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be a, uh, um, a, a Game of Thrones uh, Lannister baby. Yeah, it's uh, a Game of Thrones Lannister baby. Um, yeah, so his sister Margo is uh, interested in finding out who the surrogate is. He's keeping that information from her. Um, which is only increasing her desperation. You know, I, I like how, like, it's almost cruel. It's, no, it's not almost. It is cruel because he's doing this out of pure cruelty. The fact that he lets her know that there's this surrogate, he dangles this information, this revelation in front of her, and then he withholds the information on who the surrogate is or where they're located, just that they're on the farm. And he does this to both tease and torture her. And you can see that he delights in that. He's a sadist. Yes. Um, and so uh, Hannibal and Will arrive, as we saw in last episode, hanging upside down, uh, <laughs> where Verger uh, promptly checks their fat content or checks Hannibal's fat content with a knife. Yeah. Like, like he would any uh, prized pig, that, uh -huh. you know, and uh, Hannibal is a little lean. He needs some more meat on the bones. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then they brand Hannibal. Yes. And they reveal the plan to them, which is basically that um, they're going to slowly serve, this is what we already knew as the audience, slowly serve Hannibal to Verger. Uh, starting with his uh, hands and feet and moving on, keeping him alive as long as possible. Now, but yeah, we no. find out why Will's there. <laughs> Will is there because Berger needs a new face, and he wants Will Graham's face. Uh, <laughs> Will, Graham, Will Graham does have a pretty face. I mean, I don't blame him there. <laughs> it's funny when Will clarified that, when he's all like, so you're going to eat him with my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, those, th those moments actually were really funny. Not just that, but like the, the talk with Hannibal when the guy's talking about how he's going to prepare him and Hannibal's just smiling and he's like, you've thought of everything. <laughs> Hannibal, Hannibal is completely undisturbed by any of it. Um, Hannibal... I mean, they're just describing to Hannibal all these horrible things they're going to do to him, how they're going he's to He's just him. smiling. He's just smiling through it. You know, he's even kind of, he's like, very clean. That's, yes, that's good. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that should be I'm nice. Sure it will be delicious. <laughs> it will be delicious. You, Hannibal says at one point, you thought of everything. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh -uh. Hannibal is, uh, Cool as a cucumber the whole time, you know? Uh, <laughs> so uh, Hannibal ends up getting free uh, yes. by uh, because uh, Alana makes a deal with the figurative devil. Yeah, well, you know, Margot comes to talk to uh, Hannibal. Hannibal starts you know, doing what he does best. He starts manipulating, using his powers of manipulation to see and that's the most dangerous thing with Hannibal is you shouldn't have people go in and talk to Hannibal if you have him captured because he is going to put ideas in people's heads <laughs> and he is very good at that but he starts manipulating Margot you know telling her to kill Mason Berger and that's when Alana comes in and Alana's like you know, she doesn't even need any manipulation because she's already decided what she wants to do. Will is in danger. She wants Will safe. And so she frees Hannibal to do it. She makes Hannibal promise that he won't harm Will. And Hannibal says, I always keep my promises. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just making him even more of like a demonic figure as this person yeah. that, you know, like is kind of trustworthy if you pay very close attention right <laughs> but like if you miss the footnotes you know <laughs> yeah, then, you whoops. can be in deep trouble <laughs> you can be in 
very deep trouble. Deep uh, in his stomach trouble. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think Hannibal. Uh, uh, it was cool because first, like, he's basically telling uh, um, uh, Margot how to get away with her brother's murder. Yes. So, like, he's like, what? What does it matter for me facing another murder charge? I'll, I'll take responsibility for it. Pull a tuft of my hair out, put it in his hands. <laughs> I'll tell him how much I enjoyed killing him. <laughs> just like yeah. doesn't even care, you know? He's just like, he doesn't even care. He's like, yeah, I'll do it. It's like, whatever. <laughs> you know? Before they're like talking about freeing him. It's not even like a price for freeing him. It's just like, oh, well, it'll be fun. Kill him. I'll enjoy yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, well, it's a Hannibal that was tr trying to convince Margot to kill him since last season. So yeah. <laughs> it's still a. It's basically a continuation on that, <laughs> because he was like, "Remember our therapy." I think it, you know, Margot suggests that Hannibal kill Mason, and he says, "Well, I think it's more therapeutic for you if you did it." <laughs> <laughs> a great therapist, Hannibal. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, there was, oh my God, there was the one scene there where Cordell had Will on the operating table, and he was. Talking about cutting off Will's face with no oh, anesthesia. Before you get into him cutting off his face, it was the talk he had with him where he said, Do you understand? I'm going to uh, cut, cut off your face without anesthesia. Yes. <laughs> that made me cringe. I was like, Oh. And then they showed Cordell like, starting to make the incision. And the way they cut this was so amazing because it's this is, and this is made ex super extra uncomfortable. Because they intersperse this scene with shots from another thing happening. Let's that get to that too. It's equally sho shocking. So they did these two things simultaneously, which one by themselves is uncomfortable enough, to, but to keep hopping back and forth between both of them. <laughs> Just as you get used to the horror of one, it switches you to the horror of another. Yeah. <laughs> this was actually probably the, the most uncomfortable part of the entire episode. Um, they turned it up to 11 here. And I'll let you uh, take the lead here. Well, besides uh, Will presumably having his face cut off, we it, that all was intercut with some scenes in which uh, um, they Alana and Margo the discovered the surrogate. Yes, they find the surrogate. Which was a gigantic pig. <laughs> <laughs> Not only was it the surrogate, but the baby inside was dead. Yes, it was dead. It was the ultimate you know, cruel joke that Berger could play on Margo. And, you know, I think after that, Margot didn't need Hannibal or anybody on Earth to convince her what to do. I think she, even if Hannibal wasn't there, she would have just done it anyway after this revelation. <laughs> so this uh, is what was cutting back and forth between was basically them cutting the child out of the pig, just, you know, not to save the child because it was already dead. But right. just, you know, Margot yeah. needed it out of the pig, you know, it's right. just, just an emotional response. It's, you know, and hold fully it. understandable. Right. She needed to see the child. She needed to hold it. Um, she, needed, she needed it to not be in a pig. And she needed it to not be inside of a pig, which was really the most messed up thing I have seen. Uh, there's some messed it's up. It's reminiscent stuff. of in the second season, the guy that would stitch people into like horses. Remember? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's like they've already done this, but this is still shocking and messed up. Figure that one out. Um, <laughs> uh oh, he froze. Um, okay. Okay. Um, but this is in first with scenes of a uh, Will's face being slowly cut off by Cordell um, at the same time. So you're going from cringe to cringe, then back to cringe. <laughs> <laughs> it's an unescapable cringe. Yes. But all is not as it seems. Nope. This was a very, I like the way that they cut this because 
it is not as it seems. And when that scene ends, it's pretty brilliant. Cause it's you can... uh, uh, Verger waking up. Yep. And he's calling for his uh, assistant. Well, he's, surgeon he's, he, he's, he's got the new face on him. He's mm -hmm. got the new, the new face, which has actually not been grafted to him at all. It's kind of just been lazily slopped off over him, you know, <laughs> with no thought. Yeah. And he grabs a mirror and he looks in it and that's the assistant he's been calling for. <laughs> yeah. Looking it's, right at him in the mirror. It's the face on his. So Hannibal got to Will first. Yeah. And Hannibal hacked cut. off uh, the, the guy's face and put it on Verger. Yeah, got, got Cordell's face and threw it on Verger as like as like an as like a sick joke to Verger, you know. <laughs> it's like, well the joke's on you. Uh <laughs> not, not the only thing that Hannibal did to Verger. Oh uh, yeah. Because uh, apparently um, Margot hasn't given up on having a Verger baby. Uh, and even though she has no means of, of uh, creating one with her own um, uh, uh, parts anymore, uh, all she needed was sperm. And she oh, yeah. found a way to get it, thanks to Hannibal. Yep, Hannibal got some sperm for Margot. Which gave Margot the ammunition she needed to kill uh, Verger. Because, you know, after Margot revealed she found out what she knew, Verger got, like, super cocky. I was like, well, you can't kill me. There's no air. You know, you're going to lose everything. And that's true. That's the entire reason Margot hasn't already killed Mason before. Because she's already been contemplating it. You know, that's she's already wanted to do this well before any of this happened. Mm -hmm. But there was that lingering, everything would go away. She'd lose everything because she needs an heir to hold on to it, you know, if anything happened to uh, Mason. So, and now, uh, because Alana of Hannibal. And, and Margot uh, taunt Verger and say, Do you know what happens when you stimulate a prostate with a kettle prod? <laughs> <laughs> Hannibal does. <laughs> and so they drown. They, they attempt to drown Mason. But he actually dies a worse, worse death than drowning because uh, they throw him into the pool he has with the eel. He they, shouldn't have named that eel Chekhov's gun. That was just asking for it. <laughs> that was just asking for it. They, they, Alana and Margo attempt to drown Mason, but while they're holding him under, the eel actually swims down Mason's throat and suffocates him to death. Uh, very gruesome. <laughs> <laughs> very awesome. <laughs> yeah, very awesome. It was very awesome. Um, then and we get some more kind of emotional scenes as we find, uh, uh, you know, Hannibal brings Will home. Well, first Hannibal meets with Chio. Yeah. Uh, for their goodbye. In which uh, Hannibal admits to Chio because she's looking for closure on what happened with Hannibal's sister. That's what she's concerned about. Mm -hmm. She broaches it. Hannibal reveals that he did he did indeed eat his sister, but he did not kill his sister. Her death was the result of something else, but Hannibal did eat her. That was the beginning of his cannibalism. Mm -hmm. and that's all Hannibal rising material. That's that we, all we talked about. Yep, that's Hannibal Rising material that we talked about. This satisfies Chio, and she leaves. And then we get to see um, Hannibal having brought Will back to his house, pulls up a chair, and it's like they're back in their old therapy session. Yep, they have, <laughs> uh, they, Will and Hannibal come to an understanding, or sort of like a breakup. But like an amicable breakup, like where Will just tells Hannibal, you know, he can't see him anymore. He doesn't want Hannibal in his life. Hannibal thinks Will is like him. Hannibal even says so directly to Will's face. He says, well, you delight in it. And Will says, no, I'm not like you. I don't delight in it. I just tolerate it. And he says, he says a great line, which is, I'm gonna. I miss my dogs. I'm not gonna miss you. 
Yes, I miss my dogs. I'm not gonna miss you. This is this is definitely a breakup scene. Uh, says, I don't I don't want to know where you are. I don't want to know how to I talk want to you. Talk to you. I don't want all to of those lines. By the way, come back on him. Yes, they do. Hannibal actually has tears swelling up in his eyes in the scene. Uh, so Hannibal is actually like pretty much reduced to tears in the scene. It's clear that Hannibal does not want the relationship to end, but Will does. Mm -hmm. um, and Jack so, Crawford comes. This is the most surprising part. This is actually uh, this is actually where it it very much differs from the books and the films and what we know of what happens. Uh, this takes a major turn because Jack Crawford. Yeah, the police come. And Will just says, you know, you missed him. He left. Hannibal's gone. You know. And then Hannibal actually surrenders himself. He walks up police. and says, No, I'm here. <laughs> because and I think I think this is another ploy of Hannibal's where Hannibal realizes if he's captured, if the police capture him, he can remain in Will's life. And he even says that. He uses yeah. the words Will said to him back on Will. He says, um, basically, like Will said, I don't want to know where you are. And Hannibal says, I want you to know where I am. Yes. And I want you to, you know, like, I want you to know where you can find me. You know, like, right, basically, right. he's doing the opposite of what Will wanted. Will yeah, basically yeah. let Hannibal go to have Hannibal out of his life. And Hannibal returned and surrendered to force himself inside of Will's life. Inside of Will's life. Because Hannibal is not ready or willing to let go. Mm -hmm. And that is actually how Hannibal gets captured in a series. Not by some grand heroic act by Will Graham or anything, but simply because of this complex relationship that they built up between each other um, and and the fact that Hannibal is not willing to let go of that relationship. You gotta love Jack's humility in the situation too. Yes. Where, uh, Hannibal says to Jack, congratulations, you finally caught your Chesapeake Ripper. And he's like, no, I didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Jack isn't going to take the credit for this. He knows he didn't do anything except show up. Uh, <laughs> you know, so definitely. But I do believe that when we return, they will, the official story will match more of what happened in the books. Like the official FBI story will be Will Graham camp captured Hannibal in some heroic act, even though that's a huge lie. But, you know, that's the only way they can run with it. And not be like, you know. <laughs> but I thought I found that interesting. I found that very interesting twist. Um, at the end, where we finally learn how Hannibal is captured in this series, um, that was really cool. And that was a great ending to the season. If that was the season finale, I mean, that'd be great. That'd, that'd be a great ending to a season finale because it's kind of like. A denouement on their relationship which is what the first all of this was all about to begin with and so it's kind of like closure on that particular story now we're going into a whole new story the the adaptation the official adaptation which was always one of the end goals of the series as it was conceived for Brian Fuller was to eventually get into adapting the big novels proper. Now we're going into our first major adaptation of that. And it's going to be kind of exciting. We're getting to the real red dragon territory, as we said at the beginning of this uh, video um, with the tooth fairy as portrayed um, for, uh, 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 Francis Dollarhide, as portrayed by um, Richard Armitage, who 
um, some of our more geeky fans might know as uh, the head dwarf, the dwarf king, basically, from uh, the Hobbit movies. Yes. Who um, I saw at um, Comic-Con when I was there, and he and Brian Fuller were like, besides me, were like the only tall people there. <laughs> <laughs> So it was kind of funny. Like I was thinking, like, man, this guy was the Dwarf King, and he's like six one or something. You know? I've, I've seen the previews for the Red Dragon art. It doesn't look any less amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Starhide, you know, the, um, Armature just like take on him. He has this weird kind of like, Chilton, you know, like tick Chilton, to him. Chilton returns in this art too. He Chilton was only featured very briefly in this art. You know, and although we I, haven't seen it in the trailer, kind of just, kind of just to say, Chilton's still alive. He's not dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he but, had that second episode where he was kind of like the narrative glue. Yeah, the narrative glue between, uh, which was interesting. Uh, but that's all he appeared to do, and now it looks like he's going to be. I don't know if he's going to have any bigger of a role in this upcoming arc. But he was in the trailer. He might, and um, then we also have um, uh, uh, who might be returning because um, she or he, as it was in the books, uh, played a pretty large role in the whole Red Dragon story. Is Freddie? Oh yeah, Freddie Lounds. Yeah, who's a woman um, in this? Um, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman in Red Dragon. Um, played uh, um, as a f female character in Hannibal. Yes. Um, we've already kind of covered a lot of her story from Red Dragon in Hannibal already, though. Um, right. Given the burning wheelchair scene, which was like kind of the iconic moment. Um, yeah, I don't think they're going to redo the burning wheelchair scene this season. Um, I wonder if they're bringing her back at all. I kind of hope so. It'd be nice to get a return on that because we haven't seen her since, yeah, like, you know mid right. to late season two <laughs> yeah mid to late season two um it would make sense to have her back you know like pr if they are doing like a time jump that would make sense like she has a book out about will and hannibal and all that stuff you know and then, <laughs> and then all this stuff starts kicking on i know brian fuller said that um in the red dragon arc they're not. They're going to introduce him in like a weird way, where you're going to kind of get to know his crimes before you get to know him. Right. Okay. So you got to see his crimes before you see him, or something. That's interesting. It makes sense. Um, Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for for a long time, and I'm finally glad to see it start coming to fruition. I'm glad that the series has made it this far to do it. I think I'm, I'm a little less disappointed at the cancellation now that we're getting Red Dragon because if it was canceled before the arc happened, I would have been way more disappointed in the cancellation because I want to see how they tackled some of the more well-known material with this cast of characters and with the storytelling that they're going for, the type of storytelling. You were frozen again there for a second. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, like with uh, this cast, the cast they have, and the type of storytelling that they're going for, I want to see how they tackled the more well-known material, um, and how that would end up looking in a Hannibal TV series context. Um, that was always interesting, interesting to me, and I'm glad we're finally going to get to see that. I only wish we could be get a chance to see Charlize. Yeah, I know, right? Or Will Graham and drag. Will Graham yeah. gets a sex change. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Lena. Well, Lena. <laughs> so yeah, um, everybody, that that pretty much brings us to an end. I mean, I'm excited to see the Red Dragon content. Will already said, same boat as me there. You're excited to see uh, what's coming with the Red Dragon content. It's going to be kind of a refreshing change. And I say refreshing not because anything we had was bad, because I savored every moment of this season. 
but I'm glad that we're moving on and we're kind of getting this other kind of angle on it just because this we did have closure on this uh, as, as the show is now. And I can't wait to see it in this new way. It feels like we have to wait like a season, but it's next week. Yes. So That's there's the kind of some thing. excitement there. That is, it's, it's, it's Saturday. It's this coming Saturday. It's not a year away. I'm, I'm hyped. Yeah. Same here. Same here. So, uh, of course, that means we are going to be continuing to talk about Hannibal. So tune in next week uh, when we talk about episode eight of season three, The Great Red Dragon. Uh, and yes. <laughs> off of the food themes already. So uh, I'm, I'm disappointed we didn't get to like uh, Indian food. I, I, I wanted chicken forma to be a title of an episode. I wonder what the naming theme is going to be for the rest of the episodes. Maybe paintings? I think, yeah, I think it's paintings. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a fascinating watch. So everybody enjoy the rest of Hannibal. We will, and we'll be here to discuss it every week. So tune in to tventhusiast.com or check out our YouTube channel, both preferably might i suggest uh you can check out our other content we have a lot of content up from uh comic-con um i'm gonna post an article soon as well maybe tonight i'm not sure uh kind of gathering up all the big trailers and stuff because i know sometimes it's hard to kind of just find all that stuff so right. i figured i'd be a good kind of place where everybody gets access to all these kind of trailers that were released I'm not going to bother with like kind of the weird, you know, casting reels from Game of Thrones stuff. I'm just going to focus on pure um, trailers. Pure um, trailers, okay. Yeah, oh, but there's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff from Comic Con to watch. I might I recommend the Ash versus the Evil Dead trailer. Yes, I would note that for the uh, panels I put up, if there was a trailer for the panel, I put that into the article itself. Um, mm -hmm. So you can also find the trailers in the articles I posted up yeah. as well. Mine as well, yeah. Um, um, and we're, we're going to try to kind of fill it up so that we have the you know all the trailers available to you guys. So you can check them out. Um, yeah, so check us out, tventhusiast.com. Leave comments on our stories. Leave comments on our YouTube videos, uh, anything like that. Tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, we're, we're still a relatively new site. We're still struggling, still trying to kind of get moving. If if there's something that you feel that you want to see more of from us, if you want us to do more video or if you want to get more articles or you want to get anything, feel free to contact us. We're still growing and changing and kind of finding where we are and what we are as a site right now. So um, that brings us to a close. Thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Uh, good night. Night.